we walk in circles, hoping that one day we're fit. The voice is gonna guide us home. Melody is in the key of hope, and we will smile again. Although times are changing, we still want the same. To be embraced, to be accepted. Welcome back to Connecting Circles with your host, Lee Chamberlain, the singer of Alpha Circle. Today, I feel uh, especially excited as we have a fellow member of my group, um, the drummer, Simon Richman, uh, who's going to join us uh, for a quick interview and uh, to tell us all about his project. So um, let's get this party started. And here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Simon Richmond of uh, Alpha Circle. Nice to see you. Uh, sorry for the wait. Uh, as, as normal, you know that I sometimes do arrive late. It's, it was worth it to wind the shirt, right? <laughs> as you can see, that only the top part of a shirt is, uh, is being shown. Um, no worries. I, I wore this because I don't need to iron it. So <laughs> clever, clever. So, Simon, um, obviously some people are going to know you as the drummer um, and composer uh, and poser of uh, Alpha Circle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but today I want, I want to get to know a bit more about Simon Richmond, who you are, where you're from, um, and what other strings do you have to your bow. So let's get started with, um, where, where were you born? I was going to make a strings joke with the guitars, but uh, I was born in... Um... London Hospital a few years ago and um, I grew up in Essex and uh, I don't consider myself a typical Essex boy however um, I could you know put, put on the, the accent but yeah I've changed a little bit uh, I've been in Spain now for over 13 years so a third of my life I mean half <laughs> um, I've spent abroad so it's been, you know, a, a long journey, um, but I'm pretty happy at the moment. And at the moment, are you, so you play in one band, but are you doing uh, various projects or jobs as well? Uh, yes, yeah, so apart from the phenomenal Alpha Circle, uh, I have a few professions. Um, I do voice acting um, and I, I mainly work in sport. I work in gymnastics. Um, and I, I work in parkour. Oh, wow. So they're my main, they're my main things. I also do some translation and, and, and I can work as an inter interpreter every now and then. So yeah, pretty varied. And if you had to choose, uh, which, which do you get more passion from? Which do you, which do you prefer out of? So we've got a list here of this multi-talented. Yeah. We have actor, tran uh, translator, um, Sport. Singer as well, because you also sing, um, you play various instruments, right? Yeah, I play various instruments at the same time. I use my feet for the guitars and my hands for the piano. It's and I have a kazoo as well. <laughs> <laughs> That's a tough question, Lee. Uh, obviously, if I don't say that my main job gives me the most satisfaction, I won't have it tomorrow. You'll be fired tomorrow. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, any musician's dream, I guess, um, is, is to live, is to live from music, you know, to live off music. Um, realistically, I mean, I'm, I'm very happy just doing a gig every month or something like this. Singing, you know, maybe for work, for an advert or something, uh, karaoke or just on stage um, with the band is, is enough for me. Um, I love acting. It's, uh, as, as you know, I've, I've been acting a little bit, but... Um, yeah, and also your, your mother was an actress, right? She was, yeah. She was a theatre theatre actress, and um, well, this is a long time ago. I don't know if she's going to watch this, but um, it's obvious that she's older than I am. Um, but I remember when I was very young, um, I went to see her 
um, I think she was dancing or something. And and it, at the same time period, we went to see Sooty, uh, the Sooty show. Yeah, the Sooty, Sooty Company Sooty. show. Yeah, and I met Connie Crichton, who was one of our actresses on there. Oh, wow. And, um, and then I started, uh, started acting in uh, theatre. What did you find that, that, that gave to you? I mean, were you influenced then by seeing your mum tread the boards, as they say? Um, walk the blank. Um, I, I think I liked the atmosphere and just a bit of show, I guess. Um, and, you know, I liked to dance even if I wasn't very good. And I must have requested classes from my parents and they were very supportive. Um, and I remember my first week, I was thrown in a deep end because they wanted me, they wanted me to have a row in Oliver Twist. And I think I must have been oldest six. And I'd never heard of Oliver Twist or any plays, to be honest, that weren't on BBC. Um, which back then, we only had three well, channels, we, I believe. We need to know how old, because this could be you know, quite offensive. Um, <laughs> you well, did Oliver I'll Twist. I, okay, so I was six, and this was about 1991. Yeah. <laughs> so you can do the math um, or maths, depends if you're English or American. Um, so yeah, I, I think I requested classes. I, I took an interest in acting uh, at school as well. And I, was always, I always had a lead role in my plays at school and I sang in the plays. So it was like, I did this outside and I showed my progress at school. Um, and I, I just did a few things. I did stop when I went to secondary school. Um, they didn't offer the course I wanted. They just had drama, which was, you know, sitting in a room watching a video. Um, but then that led me to, to, to play more music. So well, that, that, that kind of brings me to, I mean, this podcast is generally, uh, we're sort of interviewing artists and connecting circles. Um, but it is interesting that I've, I've interviewed um, a singer, I've interviewed, uh, I've interviewed uh, an actress. Um, but it, there tends to be a kind of uh, parallel. That why is it that actors and singers kind of they, they both kind of do or are drawn to the same profession or industry? Um, I think it's just it's a, it's a type of creativity and expression. Uh, it's an art form, uh, and there are lots of different art forms. Don't get me wrong. Um, I think most of the time when you're an actor, you you do use your voice as well as your body language, and I think. You know, some some roles call for some kind of singing, um, and even when you're singing, you're you're kind of well. I mean, it, it should come from the heart, or maybe not. And you're kind of acting as well when you when you're on stage. You're playing live. You know, you're, you're on a stage, so you're you're kind of an actor. Um, and I think that when depending on how you learn or where you learn, I think that all these roles come together at some point. You could just be an actor, you could be there dressed as a tree, or you could have a main role, but at some point you're going to bump into some kind of singing or music. Um, and whether it's your thing or not, it's always present. And um, it's always good to have a lot of different skills in the bag. And that helped me a few years ago when I did some musical theatre in Spain. I had to sing a little bit and play the drums and act. Um, so, yeah, it was challenging, but luckily I didn't have to wear shoes, so I didn't have to worry about <laughs> tripping over my laces. That's, That's another thing, problem. right? Uh, make sure you put in the comments, okay? Actors, um, why is it that you always take your shoes off when you act? I said, I do it myself, but why? Where's yeah, I, I, I can on? answer. Go on. I can answer, yeah. uh, just because, um, just to show off my socks, really. <laughs> Uh, no, I think some sort of methodology, maybe like that, I read it in a book. <laughs> trying to get your your other actor in the scene to like do that face, like something smells weird. Something smells. <laughs> uh, no, I read it in Forrest Whitaker's autobiography. He says, "Always wear socks." Actually, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know if he has one, but I would read it. Um, voice acting, I think, it's just to be comfortable on the floor, connect to the ground, feel more human, I guess, and and also not squeak. Um, so that's one reason. Yeah. Um, acting, I think it's the same thing on stage to feel the, the because it can be quite humbling being on stage in front of people, I mean, whether it's six people who I've called and said, please come to the theatre, or, you know, 600. Um, yeah. It's, I think that the more you can connect with the atmosphere and the people, then the better. And I just, 
I don't know. It's, it's, it's my way of connecting. I'm playing the drums just because you can feel the music more. So that's well, kind let, of why. Let's go back a little bit to um, when you said that you started to so second, secondary school. They didn't really offer you the course that you, you wanted in terms of performing. And you mm. decided to take it upon yourself to, because you're a self-taught musician, right? I mean, what, 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 what instrument did you pick up first? Um, well, I tried to pick up the piano, but obviously it was very heavy. Um, I, know I do I, these <laughs> jokes, by the way. I get this every weekend. So. <laughs> um, I, I actually started having classes uh, when I was, I think, seven. I started playing the, the keyboard piano when I was three or four. My parents bought me, oh, wow. my dad gave me a small um, keyboard that he got free with a little wood catalog, and I'll never forget that. And I started to play along to the demo, which was Greensleeves. And I could play the demo after about a day. So they said, right, Simon, go and uh, you, you're going to play the piano. So I started playing the piano. I got to a decent uh, stage um, in, in the whatever they have, the, the schemes, the certificates. Uh, and then I, I was pushed a bit too much. Well, not too much. I was pushed a lot by a certain teacher. And um, I was a bit intimidated, I must be honest, and that was one of the reasons I stopped playing. Um, the the piano it, please. took the fun out of it because, I mean, it's difficult to have fun when you get to different stages in, in, in any instrument where it gets to the point where, okay, this is serious. Uh, you're not just playing with one hand now. Yeah. But yeah, it was getting to difficult pieces and I needed to practice two or three hours a day, whereas before I was just playing an hour a day. And I just, I, I decided to, to stop because I wasn't enjoying it. My parents respected that. Uh, I must admit that my, my parents were always very supportive of, of my musical interests. Apart from the drums, where they did buy me a drum kit, but they didn't like the noise. But that was my, um, well, the, the guitar was my second instrument. Um, I had an electric guitar mm -hmm. from Argos, which is a Greek god, if I'm not mistaken, the Greek god of catalogues. A few but, of the British... Uh... There's a few shouts to British uh, shops coming here, right? Index of Argos, yeah. Every time we get a British shop uh, shout out, then uh, that's a that's an, uh, You'd have to superimpose the logo on there. We'll do it. We'll do a shot. Normally, <laughs> like Little Woods, Argos. There'll be a few more. Don't worry. We if you get to Woolworths, then you've got to take a shot. Well, I worked in Boots as well, so that would come up. <laughs> um, yeah, I started. <laughs> <laughs> I started playing the guitar. Um, and I think after a week I could play Nothing Else Matters by Metallica, oh, including the solo. I used to print off all these tabs, and I had hundreds of them, and, and then I got a bass guitar, which I played for about a week, um, and then I bought an electric guitar, and I started playing that and loved it, and I played that for many years. Um, didn't really play in any of my bands because I wasn't good enough. Um, I don't he's know. Very he's very humble. I mean, this is the guy that um, came up with the chord structure for Circles, which is our intro song uh, for this podcast. And actually, Alpha Circles, uh, probably the most popular song. I mean, it's the song which uh, the crowd react to the most when we play. Yeah. So but thanks for that um, little plug. But I mean, when you say chord structure, to someone who doesn't play music or understand music itself, oh, wow, that's amazing. But it's just four things that I have it out in about two minutes. Yeah, but that's the genius of it, isn't it? I mean, if you think about the Beatles, for example, and a lot of their a lot of their songs, I mean, mm -hmm. the chord structures are quite sim simplistic. However, the the songs have lasted the test of time. So sometimes mm -hmm. I think it's the the most simplest. Or the, is that a word? <laughs> um, the the simple structures are sometimes what makes the song catchy. And Circus yeah. is definitely our, our most catchy song. And, uh, and also 1995 is a very upbeat song. That's actually an interesting topic that I wanted to ask you about. I mean, because when you compose for Alpha Circle, um, you, your main role is the drummer in the band in terms of live concerts and recording. Um, but you start with the, you, you can compose the, the song or at least the seed of the song. Um, so does, does the fact that you, you are a drummer, does that influence the rhythm and, and chords that you choose or, or improvise in, in constructing for the song? Um, that's a good question. Um, do I thought answer it? Yeah, yeah. I, I think that it can influence it. Um, however, I think that just on 
recollection. I don't think I've ever constructed a song or thought of a song just based on drums. I've never really come up with just drums and then, okay, I want to put something to this. Um, it does help with the melody and the timing of the song, of course, because it's, kind of, it's natural. Right. You know, I, it helps me to understand where there's got to be a change in the song or, or, or to maintain the rhythm of it. Um, and that's something that you've picked up yourself, not, not something that you learned. Yeah, music. no, I think, I, I mean, I'm very lucky with the fact that I, I never really went to music school. Um, I barely studied music. Uh, I mean, I can't remember anything I learned in primary school. Uh, related to classical music, which is normally what you study at first. And I was lucky enough to, to, to have that talent from a young age where I could just uh, imitate music um, with like um, just hearing a few sounds. I could then reproduce it quite accurately. Um, and also something in my head, if I think of a tune, which is what I did with, with 1995, I had the tune of a melody and was like, oh, this is catchy. And the first thought was, does this already exist? And then I, I thought about it more and I thought, I don't think so. Or something similar, I imagine. And then I just, I, I played it on the guitar, came up with some lyrics and, um, and then the rest came to kind of just... Um, it's usually the case, isn't it? When someone hears a song that, that you think, actually, this is pretty good, you think, oh, someone must have done this before. I, I saw an yeah. interview with Paul McCartney and he said the same about yesterday. He said that he that he'd, uh, he came up with yesterday and he played it to the rest of the band and, and loads of them were thinking, does this really exist? Because <laughs> it just sounded like a hit straight away. So I think that's always yeah. a good sign if that you think, well, maybe this, this could be... This that, that happened to me last week. I, I came up with a song and was like, it sounds exactly like the 12 minutes of Bohemian Rhapsody. What have I done? <laughs> I just threw away the project. <laughs> right, Simon, I'm going to get down to um, a couple of uh, questions that I've got prepared here. Oh, is it serious time? With a, who wants to be a millionaire music? <laughs> and you've already won a grand. Yeah, yeah. QQK with the uh, intense music. <laughs> right. Um, let's see. How did you find out about your favourite genre of music? How did you know? How did, like, I, I mean, I, I don't want to answer for you, but... I, I mean, you, you, know, you have a favourite genre of music. So. I'd be extremely impressed if you knew, because actually, this a massive coincidence, I'm not doing this for the show, I actually thought about this yesterday, um, and I'll tell you why. I, I was scrolling through YouTube, and there was a WWE video of Ozzy Osbourne singing. Oh, really? A song related to, I think it's War Games, or... I yeah, think it's War Games yeah. Pig, is it Pig War or something by Black Sabbath? I, don't, I can't remember the song, but it was... Um, it was on a trailer for the for the show, um, probably this Sunday. You can put a plug in for that or, or a logo. I don't want to risk them too much anymore. But um, I remember when I was very young as well, maybe 10, and I was watching Raw um, with my brother uh, at home. And it was either Raw or a pay-per-view. And WWF, as it was back then, used to play loads of rock and metal uh, on their on their trailers and stuff like that, on their videos. And I remember um, System of a Down and Fear Factory being two of the prominent names and some Metallica stuff. And then the week after I went to one of my friend's house and, um, and his brother, his older brother had this music. So I was like, oh, can I borrow the CD? And it just stemmed from there. I was already a fan of classical music and maybe the Prodigy as well. But then because of, you know, thanks to wrestling, it got me into that. Into that well, genre, and that's kind of what uh, one of, we haven't spoken about yet. Um, but it's um, kind of a, one of the things that helped us bond initially when we when we first met each other. Is uh, we, you know we both have a, a love of well, it was more WWF. I mean, wrestling's not what it was. Oh, I thought you were going to say that we both loved heavy metal. And, no, and no, no. Well, that's what I thought your genre was: is the heavy metal, basically, because I I know that you like a lot of Incubus and Tool and uh, Metallica. So mm. I imagine that that's kind of the, the genre that you were drawn to. Um, but it was it, so it was basically when you first started watching wrestling that you first heard rock that you were. That's when I, I, I was first really into it because I associated it with, with something um, cool and something that, that could be popular. Uh, it, you know, we didn't really have MTV then or any other source of, of non chart music. I don't know if that's the right expression. It was just pop, you know, like. Mm. Um, Boys Own or, or Spice Girls, not knocking them, but, um, you know, and, and then I got into the, that music, it just jumped at me and I was like, wow, I want to listen to more. 
And um, it's yeah. an interesting comment what you said. I know you've said it kind of tongue in cheek, but um, about Boyzone and, and th those type of pop bands. Uh, but we find even being in Madrid that <laughs> there's a lot of sort of money invested in putting reggaeton music on the radio, which mm -hmm. kind of means that there's not a lot of uh, options or variety. So you have to go and really look for that other genre of music. And I think that was the case definitely in, in England in a period of time with pop. You know, and nowadays it's a little easier with streaming devices. Mm -hmm. but you have to do the work yourself. You have to seek different sounds, don't you? If you want to, because I think most people wouldn't need to. They just listen to the, they would just listen to Spotify, the charts, or the radio, and be happy with that. Why would you have a need to think? Oh, I'm going to look for a new genre of music. You know, so I don't think that's a typical thing. So, I think we do lose a little bit of variety just through the channels we listen to. I mean, I'd love to encourage everyone to listen to different types of music, jazz, blues, world music, just, you know, African percussion, which, you know, maybe is not that interesting for everyone, but for me, it's because I'm a drummer. So, yeah. uh, but I would never hear that kind of stuff just from, you know, the top 40 hits that you listen to in, on Spanish radio, for example. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, luckily we had those channels so we could hear different music and see if we liked it or not. Now I want to get down to a little bit about um, what, what, do, what do, I mean, this is something that artists all have in common. I've, I've done, uh, you are, you're going to be the fourth guest on Connecting Circles, which uh, you can subscribe to our channel, by the way. If we can put some sort of link there, that would be great. <laughs> um, but something that, um, yeah, you all have in common, which is, I mean, why do this to yourself? Why put yourself on a stage where people are going to judge you. I mean, in Shakespearean times, people were allowed to throw tomatoes at you. How do you deal with the pressure and the nerves before getting on stage? And why have you chosen such a profession where you are in the public eye, you are there to be judged? That's a good question, um, because I think that's probably, the, apart from learning lines, one of the worst things about being on stage, or best things, some people thrive on the energy that a crowd gives you, uh, or public. In my case, personally, I think it's kind of, it's gone, you know, the level of nerves has gone like this, like a bit of a roller coaster. And I remember playing in, in large theatres or um, auditoriums. I used to play the piano when I was very young. I you know, did some concerts and I never felt nervous. Even with a duet or, or, or solo, I was never nervous. And it's crazy now to think back that, you know, I had a, a four minute, five minute piece of music, never made a mistake. And I didn't care about the 300 people watching me, you know. Um, and then as soon as I got a little bit older um, on stage, I started to think too much. I started to think, oh, what if they don't like me? What if I make a mistake? So it was very psychological. And, and it is a hard time for people that, that go on stage. Uh, genuinely, I mean, you know that yourself. Um, you speak to a lot of people and they, they worry about everything. I might trip over. Do I look okay? I forgot my own name, the lights, I'm sweating. You know, there's so many things that you worry about that have nothing to do with the core performance or what you're trying to express. And the same thing, actually, when I, when I started to play gigs in Madrid with the guitar, I used to do acoustic sets. I've always kind of been more nervous using the guitar than, than, the, um, than the drums, I, I think. I think I'm a natural drummer and I just like to play the guitar, I'd say. Um, and you know, I, I would just start sweating, and then because of I'd start sweating a little bit, my, my hands would get clammy and it'd just be like a vicious circle. Because I'd think about everyone, I think, oh, what if they don't know this song? What if they don't like it? What if they walk away? Should I stop? And I just overthought instead of just performing. Um, and I learned to cope with that. That, well, that, then, that's what's interesting. What, so do you have like a coping mechanism? What's your sort of ritual before you, you actually go on stage? 50 pints. <laughs> you can do that because you're not singing. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> um, I, I think there are, there are probably better ways, um, but just to experience. Experience and, I mean, finding confidence is something that some people struggle with, some people don't. I don't, can't really give any, any tips on that. I think it works differently for different people. But in my case, it's experience, because now when I go on stage and I play the drums, um, I can you know, kind of switch off and 
and just try and connect with the music. Like the the last gig we did uh, was outdoors in the in the market in the motor market, and I mean I was only playing the the, the electric drums, so it was not the same. I'm kind of sat there hunched over, yeah. but I was just looking around the market like I was just shopping and I was very comfortable. Um, and I mean, there's something yeah. to be said, isn't there, for uh, for experience, like you said. I mean, in that last gig that we played, we knew the songs. Um, it was a different atmosphere. You could kind of take it in more. So you weren't concentrating necessarily on, oh, I have to you know, remember this part. And then mm -hmm. you kind of embrace the moment a bit. But I, I had a question about playing different personalities because we're four people in uh, a band, two Spaniards and two English. Um, and everyone obviously has a different way of preparing to go on stage or to perform. Does that ever uh, interact? I mean, is that ever something that could be a problem? Is, uh, are you, do you like to be on your own before you go on stage? Do you, mm. do you be together like in a huddle, like a, an American <laughs> soccer team? Um, I, normally I like to argue with a guitarist, so... <laughs> Uh, actually, I think, I don't know how many gigs we've done uh, with Alpha Circle, but I think it depends on the personalities uh, around you. Personally, I, I kind of like to, I don't want to use the word ignore, but I like to say hello to the people that come because I appreciate everyone that, that shows up. Yeah. Whether they pay for a ticket or not, it's, it's their time and they're showing us support and that really helps us. Um, right. But, you know, just before we start, um, I like to either have a chat with you because I think we're both very calm and we like to get into character um, and, and shut out everything else. Don't think about, oh, what have we got to do later? What have we got to pack away the drums? It's just to, to be in the moment and concentrate on the performance and to give your all to the crowd because they're the people that you're playing for. While you need to enjoy it yourself, you know, they're the people you're playing to. And the more they enjoy it, the more you're going to enjoy it. Um, and but also sometimes I like to be alone. I like to go outside, um, have a breath of fresh air, and just think, okay, I'm going to enjoy this. And then, do we'll you visualize? Do you visualize how you think the concert's going to go? Or yeah. Do you just yeah. Like yeah I, would, I, I do sometimes do that, and I visualize playing a little bit too fast, and that's what happens. <laughs> All right, I'm getting I'm getting the ten minute countdown here, um, so I'm going to oh. come to a couple of uh, uh, interesting things. Well, at least I think they're interesting. Um, that you have a or, or Alpha Circle have a fan in Italy, and uh, this this lovely lady drew a picture for you for your birthday, I believe. I wondered if yeah. you could uh, sort of tell us about a little bit about how how does that make you feel? The fact that you, there's someone that you've never met who's in another country um, who's who's your fan who's gone out of their way to, to create art, uh, yeah. something that you have created yourself. Um, I, don't, I, I didn't know how to react when I saw that. Never once, no one's ever drawn me and made me feel beautiful. Um, but yeah, someone, someone drew a picture of me and that's very humbling. Probably isn't because of my uh, shabby beard, <laughs> but um, just, I don't know, I just, I don't know what to think, just very grateful uh, that someone took the time to draw me and, you know, that they, I don't know what I was doing, playing the drums or on stage or something like that in the picture. But yeah, it was wonderful. Um, but speaking of things that fans or, or friends do for us, um, one of the things that I mentioned probably to you before we started recording music together was what would your dream be? I think someone said playing at Glastonbury, you know, typical stuff. Um, you know, the warm-up act for Oasis. And I think one of the things that I said was someone writing a tab or posting a tab of, or a cover version of one of our songs. Now, admittedly, no one's done a cover version of the drums yet because they might maybe not that interested. <laughs> but several people have done covers of songs where you think, I sat and wrote that on my sofa. Why yeah. did someone cover it? And it's crazy, absolutely oh, crazy. And it's really... In, it's one of the things that makes everything worth it because yeah. that's how we grew up with music or I especially started playing the guitar because I like music I got a guitar downloaded the tabs or, or just copied it and it got me into music so if you know if we if I've inspired one person to pick up an instrument uh, and play music then it's, it's worth it 
Well, I think it, it's that, it's that, isn't it? I mean, without sort of using the title of the uh, the podcast, it is about connecting. Uh, even in the lyrics to Circles, um, I mean, maybe you can exp- elaborate a little bit more about uh, what Circles is about, but but it's, I, I mean, I can when I heard it for the first time or read the lyrics, I thought, wow, it's, this is about the connectivity, you know, and 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 there's no more. I think the fact that we've connected with uh, that that girl, which I'll give her a shout out, she's got a great Instagram page called Laura Meets Musicians, mm-hmm. uh, where she she kind of spotlights a lot of um, indie artists. I mean, for her to to go out of her way and and to you know to create that art for you, and for the people that have sent us videos just recently, there was a, a young boy that we don't know. Um, in fact, look on, Inst- on on Alpha Circle's Instagram page because I don't know his. Um, his actual Instagram, but I mean, he uploaded a video of grooving uh, yeah, was nice. playing, playing a video yeah. and it's got over a thousand views. And shout out to that boy, shout out to Laura, and shout out to everyone really. Yeah, anyone that's gone, that's gone on to, to do that sort of thing. But maybe you could, maybe you could tell us a little bit about um, Circles as we, as we count down now to the end of this uh, episode with the highly talented Simon Rich. Are you going to put a countdown music on for the last five minutes? <laughs> That'd be annoying. Um, I, I mean, I, I like to think that the songs can be interpreted pretty much how anyone else or anyone wants to. So it kind of makes it their own as well. Um, I think some songs are easier to do than others. I mean, 1995 maybe, or grooving is basically about going out and having fun. Circles, the, the main inspiration, I guess, is that, especially nowadays, everyone all wants to be different or wants to be equal. No one. No one really agrees, um, and I think that it's just me standing up and saying that I can't we all just respect each other and get along, which is the easiest answer, which, which isn't the answer. It, it doesn't solve anything, but um, it's kind of an inspiration. I, I saw things on Instagram and thought, oh, that person's not happy, you know, why not? And maybe someone in the street that's different, and, and being in a band, different inspiration, different backgrounds. Instead of, you know, kind of, um, I, I'd say try and um, not just respect, but to, to cherish differences and to create something unique from those differences and just to, to basically just support each other. Because if you support one person, they're more likely to support another. And that was kind of the yeah. idea of circles just to, to help each other really um, oh, man. Really and also we're in a time where I think we just were coming out of the pandemic or we were in it um, so I think it was a really sort of apt song for, for the time um, mm. Simon I, I uh, would lo- I could talk to you all day as we do most weekends I, I don't want to so. <laughs> but I have to iron this shirt so um, <laughs> I'm going to ask you what, what are some projects that you're excited about um, um, coming soon and also if you could um, give us the sort of handles to any of your social networks or anything any projects that you would like your fans to support you on oh I don't know if I have fans I know the band has fans so I'm sure you'll plug the band stuff uh, my personal Instagram is simon.richman um, it's just me I don't have much stuff there I put some stories up of the competitions I go to abroad um, some stuff uh, with concerts that we do behind the drums, maybe. Um, but yeah, it'd be nice to, to to chat some people and maybe give me inspiration for another song. Um, and uh, this year was well, almost finished. I don't know when you got upload this. I'm assuming it's before 2023. Depends on Kike. <laughs> um, but yeah, looking forward to seeing my parents and my brother and my nieces and nephew and their dog at Christmas in England and, and having some some real spam and marmite, not together. And just enjoying the rest of New Year and then next year, loads of activities with Parkour, the band, got a gig early in the year. And yeah, getting, Which you getting, fit, getting fit again. Um, at the WeGo app, uh, January 28th, Alpha Circle will be playing at El Perro um, in Madrid, in Malasaña. So come along, come join us. Um, Simon, it's been an absolute pleasure. Before I leave, um, I had a message from um, a man in New Zealand, I believe, called oh. Spider Hands, and uh, oh. wanted me to pass on. He reviews musicians, and he okay. wanted me to pass on this message that you are a sick drummer. 
<laughs> no, I, I'm feeling I'm feeling okay. I don't think I have a temperature, but yeah, it's a very nice compliment. If, if you wanna if you wanna uh, watch that video of Spider Hand uh, reviewing Alpha Circle and giving a big shout out and lots of love to Simon Richmond, that is available on YouTube too. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us here on Connecting Circles. Uh, it's been a pleasure to interview this Essex gentleman, and uh, I will no doubt be seeing him soon. And I hope to see you guys on the next episode. Thank you. Cheers. We are the sound resting with family. Let's laugh together happily.